Hello, and welcome to our series, Conversations on Zionism, Reclaiming the Narrative. I'm Russell Robinson, Chief Executive Officer of Jewish National Fund USA. The time has come to be the voice of what Zionism really is. We're exposing the beautiful and diverse facets and facts of Zionism. Join me on this journey, together with Conversations on Zionism, Reclaiming the Narrative, this is Zionism. My guest today is Omar al-Busadi, a Fulbright scholar, author. He is the Economics Affair Liaison for the United Arab Emirates. He is the head of the U.S. office of Sharaka, which was founded by young leaders following the Abraham Accords to turn the vision of peace into a reality amongst the people of the Gulf states and Israel. Please welcome Omar al-Busadi. Omar, welcome to Zionism Studios, to ZTV, to our conversation. i am uh, really been very excited about this moment, uh, but I'm going to get on to some of our questions because it's going to deal with Zionism. It's going to deal with our connections. It's going to deal with the work that you do uh, to, to bringing a connection between people and people. You know, I, I read something uh, uh, about that you wrote. Uh, that you said that your uncle taught you about business. He taught you about listening and questioning. So today, I'm going to take your uncle's role. I'm going to question you, and I'm going to listen, and I want to learn. But I'm going to take you back to what that moment was where you questioned about why don't we have a relationship with Israel? 100%. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Russell. I had that question because I always discuss one thing that is really important. In the UAE, we have 200 nationalities that live here. We've always had people from all over the world, different backgrounds, ethnicities, etc. And I was like, why do we not have a relationship with Israel? We have a relationship with other countries that we may not agree with uh, in some of their policies, but we still have a relationship with them. So that was always something that I didn't only just ask myself, but people around the world, wherever I travel, they would ask me, they say, oh, you know, we see that the UAE is very tolerant and it's very diverse, but how come you don't have Israelis or can Israelis enter the country? So that was something that I said to myself, I was going to discover. I connected with a lot of Israelis before the signing of the Abraham Accords. And when it was finally signed, uh, I mean, I kind of felt that the government one day was going to make that happen. And I'm really happy that the UAE was the first country to normalize relations with Israel. Us as well, and I want to thank you because they, that is a big step. So I'm going to take you to that moment, the Abraham Accords, you hearing about it, it's going to be signed. You had always questioned it. You come from a family uh, who, who uh, and a whole country of tolerance and, and the education system. We'll talk about that a little bit. The Abraham Accords are going to be signed. Here is going to be this revolution. What was going through your head? What did you see your opportunity role to play in this historic moment? Before the signing of the Abraham Accords, I was really honored to be speaking at the 37th World Diamond Congress in Dubai. That happened sometime in 2017. When I was invited to be a keynote speaker, I was told by the chairman of the conference, uh, His Excellency Ahmed bin Salehi, he said, Omar, I want to tell you something. Majority of the audience are going to be people coming from Israel. So please uh, make uh, give them a, a, a moment or a, a show that they would never forget. And I want you to really help to inspire them and make them feel safe and welcome in the UAE. That moment was the turning point for me about me extending my personal relationship with the Israelis that came here. There was around uh, 1,200 people that came to the conference. Uh, majority of them came from Israel. And when I spoke about, you know, the, 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 the real true meaning of tolerance in, in, in Islam and coexistence as well with the, with the foundation of the UAE and the principles of the UAE, they were, I had people that were literally tearing Russell. And that for me sort of like opened the door with connecting with a lot of Israelis on social media, even bef before the signing of the Abraham Accords. One of the things that I also started to do with my Jewish friends, uh, who are like either British Jews or Americans that live in the UAE and have been here for the longest time, I started to create videos on 
on my Instagram and my social media channels. And, you know, on, for example, on Hanukkah, on Rosh Hashanah, on Eid, on Ramadan. And slowly, slowly, I was sort of like building that bridge between the Muslim and the Jewish community. And, and for God's sakes, I would tell people, these are our cousins. Like, we have to make that connection. So then when the Abraham Accords was signed, I went crazy on social media. I was like in, interviewed, I was interviewed by so many different media outlets from Israel, from the US, from the UAE. And then I got a call uh, from this wonderful organization, Sharaka, uh, which means partnership in Arabic. And they said, Omar, listen, we love everything that you're doing on social media. Would you like to be, uh, would you like to represent this organization that was set up by Israelis and Emiratis? And I said, absolutely, yes. So I'm the CEO of Sharaka USA. So tell us about Sharaka USA, because it is so unique. It is not just business to business. It is people to people. So tell our audience more about Sharaka. So Sharaka was set up by a, a group of Emiratis and Israelis, literally to translate the, what the government accords is all about and what they have signed. Uh, we didn't want it to just be, you know, we didn't want the, the Abraham Accords just to be about business and um, uh, government relations, but we wanted it to be about people to people relations. And with the pandemic, we knew that if we did not set up our entity, probably the, the interaction between the Israelis and Emiratis, as well as the Bahrainis, would probably be very slow. It might be something like, not maybe not the same as what happened between Israel and Jordan and with Egypt, but it could be a bit slower than normal. So Sharaka was set up, and immediately one of the things that they did is they took a delegation from the UAE to Israel. They went and met different communities in Israel, the Bedouin community, the Orthodox community. They went to Yad Vashem. They went to the beaches in Tel Aviv. They went everywhere. They had amazing hummus, of course, I heard as well. I missed out on that, uh, but the delegation loved it. And then we also took a delegation from Israel to the UAE, and they had a wonderful time. One of the things that we focus on a lot is to try to folk, uh, uh, to try to organize cultural activities to educate the people about the, both cultures. So we had a Rosh Hashanah here in Dubai. We organized Hanukkah. We had the Tu Bishvat just recently. Um, we also had the Lag Omer festival during Ramadan. So we were basically celebrating Iftar and Lag Omer in the desert in Dubai. It was beautiful. Like we had both festivals from both faiths uh, celebrated. And it was attended by people from different parts of the world that reside in Dubai. So this is one of the things that we've done. And also, Russell, just to go on your question earlier as well, from a business perspective, there's lots of entrepreneurs from both sides that ask us to connect uh, 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 each other with, f- from different sectors, whether it was agri-tech, food, water, um, climate change, uh, security. And we are making that connection between the business community in both countries. Let's talk about education, because we're talking about Zionism. We talk about the reality of Zionism, the true story of Zionism. So I'm going to ask you first, Zionism, good, bad, your interpretation, you hear all of the stuff in the news. How do you perceive it? So well, the more we understood what the meaning of Zionism is, now that we've engaged and interacted with Israelis, we understand it is basically the rights for the Bani Israel, which literally is even in the Quran, Bani, the people of Israel. It says that in the Quran as well, that this is their um, sacred land. And uh, for us, we now, what we're doing at Sharaka, and even me, myself, it's we're trying to educate people about the true meaning of Zionism. And it's not about, um, you know, uh, one people over another. It's, it's, it's the right of the Jewish people to be in Israel, 
and of course, accepting and, and, and living amongst people from all over the world, but it's the right for the Jewish state to exist. So for us, we communicate this uh, with our different communities here in the UAE and overseas, and that's what the work of Sharaka is all about. Part of peace, it's not just a business relationship, it is about education. And you cannot just start educating, uh, you know, I'm sorry, at your age, you got to start younger. And, and your uh, government has really made that effort in the school system, haven't they? 100%. So one of the things that we did in the UAE, and it was actually a smart move before the signing of the Abraham Accords, the UAE introduced something in the curriculum called UAE Moral Education. There's actually a website for the viewers out there to check it out and see the details of moral education. There's no textbooks in this, but it's what, what, they, what the UAE government did is they brought in all the teachers from all the public schools to discuss with students about the ideas of uh, tolerance, coexistence, and acceptance of people from different backgrounds. And this information is uh, now taught to kids like from a very young age. It starts from primary school all the way up um, uh, to high school and across schools around the UAE. And also, one of the things that a lot of people don't know is in public schools, several public schools, at least 20 of them have already started to teach Hebrew as a second language. So you can take Hebrew right now in the UAE, which is amazing. And they also teach Hebrew at the Anwar Gargash Diplomatic Academy. Uh, so uh, diplomats have an opportunity to take Hebrew uh, um, now that their relationship has grown with Israel. Give us some things that you see in the next year, five years, 50 years, in building that new conversation between the Gulf states, between us, between Jews, between uh, Arabs, all of us. Yeah, well, I'll tell you this. The one thing that's happening, Russell, is by 2021, a thousand Israelis already moved permanently to Dubai. This is the beginning of the conversation. I mean, again, where I know there's lots of deals that have been made, over a billion um, uh, dirhams of trade between Israel and, uh, and the UAE already took place. And, and the, the governments are talking about reaching a trillion dollars in 10 years. And that is definitely a possibility. The UAE Minister of Economy, His Excellency Abdullah bin Tok, talked about that in an interview with Bloomberg. That means the UAE is going to achieve that with Israel. You already see um, a lot of different products uh, from Israel being uh, uh, imported here in the UAE, including Israeli avocados, which is beating American avocados. Uh, and Americans are not happy with that. But I mean, this is this is this is one of the things that's showing uh, the signs of pro prosperity and success to other countries that have not yet normalized its relationship with Israel. Of course, one thing that we have to mention as well is, look, the UAE and Israel, they've been working together for a long time. Uh, I like to call it a formalization agreement more than a normalization agreement. They were always partners, particularly when it comes to security, weapons, um, um, and different aspects of uh, you know, the, the economy that the two countries have been working on. Now, it, what we wanted to do and what the UAE has done, Russell, which is really important, if you look at all the different projects that we've done here, uh, when it comes to infrastructure development, when it comes to diversifying our economy, you notice that other countries like Qatar or Saudi Arabia or Oman and, and elsewhere, they're all trying to emulate our model. And us normalizing the relationship with Israel, showing the benefits or, and the fruits of this relationship, it's going to attract other countries to follow suit. Uh, we saw recently the deal between Israel, Jordan, and the UAE about, you know, exchanging water uh, for electricity between Israel and Jordan. It's, it's a very big deal. So the fact that the UAE is um, the key player in, you know, arranging uh, trilateral or contractual um, agreements between the countries, it's a, it's a huge um, uh, testament for the country and it's a, a great model for peace and and hope for the region. We know you can't come to us today, so we're bringing Israel to you. Welcome to our show, online mitzvah marketplace, shop Israeli goods. And what better way to contribute to Israel and small businesses here in the Western Galilee? You'll all need to hop online to www.jnf.org forward slash shopping. Handmade in the Holy Land. Handmade in the Holy Land. I love it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs>
I'm going to go on the water issue that you talked about because I don't think people realize that we're going to talk people to people, but this is a people issue. Water, which is the basic uh, element for life. Uh, there was an agreement that has been signed now by Israel Jordan that was put together by the UAE that Israel is going to be supplying more water. And I try to give a little bit of a lesson here. In the peace agreement with Jordan, the third paragraph, Omar, was water. It's never been in a peace agreement in any other country, between countries, water. Israel gave uh, Jordan, uh, um, I think it was 100 million cubic meters of water, or 1 million, I don't remember the number. But now they just signed an agreement that the UAE put together, that Israel is going to be supplying water to Jordan from the desalization plants on the Mediterranean, and Jordan is going to be supplying power to Israel through solar farms, all put together through the UAE, financed on the Jordanian side, especially from the UAE. This is what peace brings, is a drop of water, drop of life to a people. One million percent. And, and again, uh, uh, Russell, this is the benefits of, of governments being pragmatic and, and moving away from ideolog ideological like um, uh, theories and, 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 and using those theories to sort of like uh, polarize the people's opinion and polarize them on so many things. I mean, yes, I'm not denying, no, we're not denying that there are issues that need to be resolved, but let's take, let's work on things that, you know, we can, we can solve and we can, uh, and we can, uh, you know, uh, tackle. And then the other issues that, you know, that still are there, we can work on them, uh, you know, in parallel, but not to ignore a dialogue or conversation with, with Israel when, you know, we, we, when there's so many opportunities that we can still fix. And, and hopefully when we work on these other projects and, and other opportunities, maybe we can find a result uh, or resolve the situation that is going on uh, with, with the Palestinians, etc. So this is one of the things that, uh, again, going back to my point, the, uh, this pragmatic approach that the UAE is taking uh, and, is, and, and is now being followed by other countries, as you said, Jordan as well, we're going to see a shift very soon by other countries as well. One of the things that I talk about a lot is just take a look at Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is taking this very same steps as the UAE did before they announced the Abraham Accords, particularly when it comes to sports diplomacy, cultural diplomacy. You know, you already see that they have uh, a chief rabbi writing on, uh, who, is, who is a columnist for Arab News, which is a very big Saudi publication. You already see that uh, an Israeli judoka and the Saudi judoka compete at the Tokyo Olympics. And then that was very significant. You see that where, during Jewish holidays, um, the Arab news is also celebrating the, and educating the people about what Jewish holidays are about. And, and, and the fact that planes are flying from Israel to the UAE via or over Saudi Arabia, that is a huge step. You already know something big is going to happen. And the fact that Saudi Arabia is putting its bid to host the expo in 2030, it's very clear, Russell. Any country that wants to host an event like that, they have to agree and accept to invite every country that is um, that has a seat in the UN, including Israel. So they would have to normalize relations before that event happens. Is 2030 is just a, a blink away. In your first book, Omar, you wrote about that you take complex issues and simplify them. Sharaka is trying to do that people to people. Give us some just simplified ways of making these complex issues people to people. Where should we be looking, all of us, on building those kind of conversations between people? The first, and I think the only step to do to simplify everything, is to pick up the phone or get on an email and, and communicate. Like, just start open a conversation. It's like with anybody or anything, Russell. If you have um, a disagreement with someone, you have mostly two ways to deal with it. Either you ignore it, and the further you ignore, the bigger the problem it gets, or sit down and have a conversation. And that's what we notice with Sharaka. The moment we sit with people, by the way, people who aren't big fans of Sharaka, because they assume that we are, we're, we're, we're ignoring certain issues, whatever. But the moment they hear our story, you will see the looks on their faces. They, 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 they sit with, with, with angry or like frowning faces, 
And then in the end, it smiles and tears and hugs and, and, and surprise. And people are like, wow, we did not know this is what's taking place on the ground. So to solve this complex problem, it starts with having a conversation. Every big deal and every big uh, sort of like moment in our lives started from a conversation. And that's what we need to have. So I, I, I want to um, uh, follow that up. One of the things that we are going to be involved in, and we're going to get you, Omar, involved, is we're building in Beersheba a world Zionist village. And the village is not about buildings. The first words that we've talked about, building a new conversation. And so I'm, I'm so intrigued by what you're saying and so empowered by what you're saying is that we have to have those conversations, not shouting matches, not protest for the sake of protest, and to listen and to learn from each other, going back to your uncle, listen, learn, and then uh, educate so that we can move forward. And, and what you're doing with Chirac and what you're doing people to people, when you are doing here in the UAE and in New York and in Israel is just uh, amazing. And so we all have to learn from you. We all have to take it that one step further of talking to each other. And so when you were working here in the United States with Shiraka, give us some of your goals that you want to accomplish in the next year. Uh, so number one, we want to uh, tackle, um, I think the, there's a lot of anti-Semitic activities and universities and campuses, that's, that's number one. So we're going to go to campuses. We have a lot of plans this year. Uh, we want to go to campuses and tackle anti-Semitic, number one. Number two, we want to educate the American audience, which includes students, the media, politicians, and the general public about what's taking place in the Middle East. Because unfortunately, the only thing they see is just the negative news that takes that comes out of this region, whether it's happening around Yemen or with Israel or whatever, all these different, and even with the UAE now, we, we are trying to translate or to communicate the positive things that are happening. This is unfortunately not getting highlighted by mainstream media. Uh, we're trying to hopefully have more satellite Sharaka um, bases around the US because we've seen that, look, when we, when we take delegations, they work extremely well, but being stationed there in some of these major states will allow us to continue more activities and, and, and making it um, last longer rather than just going in and coming out. It's, it's, it's very transactional right now, but we need something that is more sustainable and long-term. So these are some of the projects that Sharaka is working on. And we believe that with the, with the response that we've received, and we're only a year old and a few months, um, it's, the sky is the limit of what we can do in, Shara in the U.S. And, uh, and also around the world. So Omar, when you come to the United States, we're gonna be taking you on college campuses. We work in 57 college campuses to bring the positive stories of Israel, of Zionism, uh, the positive stories of what Sharaka is uh, trying to do people to people. We bring non-Jewish college students, uh, Muslims, Christians, Catholics, Sikhs uh, to Israel every year, 80 of them, who not on a political trip, where we take them to go see Israel from the north to south, just what your delegation saw. They'll, they'll talk about the best hummus that they had or the best falafel and, and, and meet the people on the streets of Kiryat Shimona and Beersheba and Tel Aviv and, and not be worried about the hallways of the Knesset or a faculty fellowship. We take a group of, of primarily non-Jewish professors to Israel every year, 50 of them. So we're going to utilize you and Sharaka to be able to inner, you know, uh, change our uh, opportunities to give that new conversation about shared values and common destiny uh, to everybody. So you're going to be very busy here. Uh, get your seatbelt going because we're going to take a ride together. I'm going to send you my, my passport copy immediately. I can't wait. I also, you know, I hope that maybe one, one of the things that we could also do is expand that trip to also to possibly maybe the UAE and Bahrain so they see 
what's really happening with 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 also the Israelis that have moved here that are living here and it's safe for them as well. Like, uh, and and one of the things I was going to suggest as well. Um, I mean. Uh, we at Sharaka, one of the things that we try to promote is those very unique stories. So, for example, Russell, one of the things that amazes a lot of people when we speak in conferences and we, when we tell them we have Emiratis studying right now in Hebrew in Israel. So if we did take the students to Israel, we would show them and introduce them to the Emiratis that are currently studying in Israel who, in, in Hebrew. And also we have Bahrainis that are studying in Israel now. So that is uh, something that really like takes people away and uh, and and they, they're, they it really shocks them when we speak about these um, uh, stories. All right, so see, we just expanded the trip and expanded our piece. I want to close on something that really was touching, you know, and it was a beautiful words. You know, when we, on Tu B'Shvat, it is a holiday in which uh, it is not just about tree planting. It is about, uh, it is really the first Earth Day, you know, and I tell people all the time, it all started with the Jewish people who celebrated this wonderful thing that was given to us by God, Earth Day. And we had a tree planting. And when you plant a tree, you know, it, it is said that it's not for yourself because it will take 20, 30, 40 years for that tree to grow. It is for your children, your grandchildren. And Sharaka, you and everybody participated in a tree planting uh, in the Gulf states, in a tree planting in Israel, even though it's Shemitah, we did it in uh, uh, containers. Um, Tell us a little something about that, your feeling about that, about participating in that act of something that will make a difference for the future. Yeah, I first want to say uh, we're very grateful at Charaka for JNF support for that event. Um, it was very well received. Uh, we, uh, as you said, we did one in Israel and also here in the UAE. Um, and in the UAE, we had uh, Rabbi uh, Levi Duchman who came and he read blessings and he explained about, you know, the fruits of planting this tree, like what's going to come out, just like, the Abraham Accords, you know, where we planted a seed and now we're seeing the fruits of that plant and um, and the seed. And and um, uh, and this is what it's all about. For the UAE, it's a very significant thing about tree planting uh, because the founder of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Zayed um, bin Sultan Nahyan, I mean, he was a, a, a massive advocate for uh, trying to plant trees in the country to try to reverse desertification and, and provide a, a better quality of life for his citizens. So if he was alive to see this, I'm sure he would have celebrated Tu Bishvat uh, with us uh, during that time. So it was a wonderful event and we're very grateful for the JNF for their support. And hopefully there's gonna be many different events that we want to work on. And uh, we, 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 we hope that we can work with JNF on those projects too. Well, you will Omar, and I'll tell you something else. Uh, as we conclude, I, I, I'm just, it's such, I, I, I could go a thousand different ways, but I'm going to go this with you. I talked about the World Zionist Village. It's going to be in a place called Beersheba. In that village, we're going to have a place where we're going to have people from Sharaka and United States and from Paris and from Gulf states, and they're all going to come together and have a conversation. But I'm going to go there and we're going to see the site in which we're building this 20 uh, acre village on. But you and I are going to go there because it is literally a half a mile away from a place called Abraham's Well. Abraham's Well, where the conversation first began. And we will continue that conversation, Omar, that was began with Abraham and continues with us and continues for our children and great-grandchildren and children yet unborn from the trees that were planted on this Tu B'Shvat. And I thank you for your advocacy, for standing up, for you being a partner with us. Thank, I would thank you for having us too. And uh, inshallah, I will see you at the village for sure. Thank you very much. Shalom. Thank you. Shalom. To watch this and all of our past episodes, go to ZTV, our Zionism Studios YouTube page, and subscribe to get notifications.